part seven of a very important read of an article posted on geoengineeringwatch.org. Former Air Force officer warns Americans of atmospheric spraying and the coming collapse. If you have not heard part one, two, three, four, five, and six, you can go to my channel and listen and then come back and listen to part seven. Or you don't have to listen at all. Just click on the link below and read it yourself. Very important information that this Air Force Colonel is imparting to all Americans. And I will pick up part seven right here. I cannot urge you strongly enough to educate yourself now with current and accurate information regarding what the military industrial corporate complex is doing in and to our country, your state, your county, your community, your community, because they have penetrated all levels. You are already intimately aware of the incredibly deleterious effects that overspraying our country with tons of toxic and potentially toxic elemental, chemical, and biological agents has done and is doing. To me, as a teacher, therapist, and researcher, only people who are truly psychiatrically disturbed could even contemplate, let alone carrying out, these kinds of heinous, egregious crimes against his or her fellow Americans, let alone innocent people in other parts of the world. For years, I think we all believed that the Holocaust represented the epitome of cruelty and inhumanity. My concern is that if allowed to proceed unchecked, the cost in terms of suffering and human lives during the creation of the New World Order will surpass the Holocaust many times over. Of major concern to anyone involved in civil defense is the possible loss of mains power, 120 or 240 volts AC house current from our major power grids and the horrendous ramifications that that would entail, particularly as far as nutrition is concerned, while people have petitioned con Congress for years to harden our power grids, as most major nations of the world have, they have consistently refused to do so. Whereas this process would have cost upwards of $500 million 10 years ago, today it would cost approximately $50 billion and still Congress has refused to take any action on our behalf to provide this additional protection, not only to those of us who can fend for ourselves, but for those children and adults who are hospitalized, using medical appliances as part of their home health program, or our sick and elderly residents of long-term care facilities. At present, our understanding is that two electromagnetic pulse EMP devices detonated at an altitude of 50 miles in the eastern and western portions of our country would completely eliminate all electrical power in the, United, in the United States. Furthermore, all unprotected electronic equipment, including onboard computers and vehicles and aircraft, would be destroyed. Your cars, all of your computers, your cell phones, destroyed. What follows in terms of human behavior, you can imagine, particularly if you remember Hurricane Katrina, looting, theft, and civilian casualties as food and water sources grow scarce and hunger and thirst increased. Some New Orleans law enforcement officers chose, instead of reporting to work, to loot stores, pharmacies, and the abandoned or occupied homes of flood victims. As an aside, Amateur radio operators provided communications for Coast Guard and other agencies who, for whatever reasons, were unable to communicate with each other. This could be monitored by most amateur radio operators across the country. While Obama is merely a puppet of the so-called elites or the Illuminati, he is not a benign puppet. He has demonstrated his lust for absolute power over all Americans and his ability to be dishonest in the tradition of George Bush Jr., who told us repeatedly about Saddam Hussein's hidden cache of weapons of mass destruction, 
of which none were ever found, or Bill Clinton's adamant denials of having any involvement with Monica Lewinsky, American presidents, cabinet members, and congressmen lying to Americans has become something of an American political tradition. In my estimation, we have lots of politicians, but very few, if any, statesmen or statespeople. There's no difference between the parties. And each president is continuing the agenda of the previous president. Instead of living in fear from day to day of imminent monetary collapse, the illegal declaration of ma uh, martial law or second civil war or a third world war, fear of being detained indefinitely in a FEMA camp, or if your name appears on a Department of Homeland Security red list or blue list being neutralized, why are so many Americans seemingly afraid to assume their proper roles as citizens of the United States who are accountable only to their creator and to whom all government employees, public servants, are accountable? We have the God-given authority to put an end to all of this if only we will act. That means setting aside petty differences, discarding selfishness, and coming together as one group with one very important common cause, the saving of a nation. The late Dr. Samuel Hayakawa, linguist, general, semanticist, English professor, emeritus president of San Francisco State College and US senator to California, wrote, a difference in order to be a difference has to make a difference. Are the differences that separate and divide us as a people really are the differences that separate and divide us as a people really differences? For example, compared to the challenges we now face and those that have been promised to us, exactly how much difference in practical, realistic terms do the color of, persons, of a person's skin or his or her ancestry one's religious beliefs, or the manner in which they wear their hair, how much do these differences really make? Part eight will be posted as soon as YouTube allows me to up 